Welcome back. All right, well, we have escaped the blight, made it to Kirkwall, served our year's probation, if that's what you want to call it, with the mercenaries. Met Varric, who's keeping the uh, undesirables off our back. Allow us to get on our own feet. Bodan Fedic, purveyor of goods, both common and rare, at your service. And this is my son, Sandal, who is as brilliant an enchanter as you'll ever find. Say hello to the nice human, Sandal. Hello. Sandal. We shall be accompanying your expedition and providing the needed supplies. It's all quite exciting, isn't it? The thought of adventure does make me giddy. <laughs> A kindred soul, surely. <laughs> but I digress. Do you wish to peruse my wares, or perhaps make use of Sandal's unique talents? Enchantment? <laughs> Just so. Yes. It's classic, man. I thought all enchanters were mages. Not at all. The fabled dwarven resistance to magic has allowed enchantment of crafts for countless ages. Granted, most dwarven smiths must work for many, many years to learn the skill. But my boy is a natural, a savant beyond compare. I like enchantment. <laughs> <laughs> and he enjoys his work. What more could one ask? You two don't seem the sort to hire onto this sort of expedition. My son and I have never played it safe. Never captured a tried and true rogues. In fact, we have just returned from adventures while accompanying the hero of Pareldon, legendary Grey Warden and Vanquisher of the Blight. So you helped to defeat the Blight? In our small way, perhaps. We did not fight at the Grey Warden's side, of course. The hero of Ferelden is a fine woman. After all her accomplishments, may she find even greater success. Ah, but surely my past is hardly of interest to the likes of you. Let's see what you have. By all means, feel free to peruse my wares whenever you wish. Man, I miss these guys. These guys are great. Bodan with his way overpriced ass goods and uh, Sandal with enchantment? He's awesome, man. Oh, who doesn't love Sandal? Alright, now actually, I don't think Bodan actually has anything I need now. He may have one of those um, one-time items later, like a tome or a backpack or something. That's I don't think so, but I, I don't know. I don't remember. But uh, a good rule of thumb in, in this game is to essentially check every area in the daytime, then turn around and check every area at the nighttime. Besides the times that you're actually going to, you know, backtrack and go back to some areas to, re you know, finish off quests and stuff. But to make sure you visit every area, uh, both day and night, um, during each chapter. And make sure you check each merchant at least once. Because they will pop up with tomes, backpacks, um, add-ons for your uh, followers' armor. Besides some certain uh, specific quests... Where, you know, if, if you loot certain objects, you'll find pieces of uh, follower gear, party member's gear. Sometimes as loot, but um, a lot of shops will sell, you know, like an upgrade to a breastplate for Varric or something. I don't know, you know, things like that. And so uh, definitely keep an eye out for these things. Like this guy right here, I think he has a backpack. Yeah, and, and it's relatively cheap too, okay? Less than less than one gold, but uh, that might not be there during Act Two, or whatever. So you know, I'm gonna make sure we get it now. And we see the ex exclamation points up there on the mini map, showing side quests and what have you. Things to check out. Ah, long time no see, my friend. Well, if it isn't worthy, the dwarf with the incredibly ironic name. <laughs> I only advertise the truth. You still with the Red Iron? It was just a year you were with them, right? Still trying to ferret out everyone's business, I see. <laughs> of course. How else do you expect a dwarf to make a living? I'll tell you what. I still have my old contacts. You need some runecrafting done, I can arrange it for you. Take care, Hawk. Don't get dead. Mm, thanks for that. 
Now, I think we get one of these books in our actual house. Um, or in this case, Gamlin's house, whatever. But, uh, you know, it's convenient having it right here. You can order some runes and then run right over there to Sandal and have them put them in your gear. I guess his specialty would be that. Now, I'm going to get a bunch of DLC stuff. Um, not exactly sure how much, but I did order a bunch of it. Another Ferelden Street rat? Are you here to waste my time, or do you actually have coin to spend? Yeah, that makes me want to shop right here, right now. Queen and I were just leaving. Yeah, right? Hey, I'm having a bad week. There are few Ferelden's of means in Kirkwall. Forgive me. You wonder why you're having a bad you week? Armorer, a that attitude? My stock is varied. What all my wares have in common, however, is quality. Only the best for my distinguished patrons. See for yourself. Right now, I think he has a tome, and this is definitely something we're coming back for. In fact, uh, tomes come first uh, above and beyond everything else in order of importance. Because they are, uh, you know, skill ability points and stuff. So, that's definitely a must-have. But uh, we can't even come close to affording that right now. I'm not going to worry about the gold we need for the expedition. There'll be an opportunity to get that regardless. And so I'm going to use my money for uh, what it's meant for, to spend. <laughs> I'm going to be buying things as I can. But uh, yeah, tomes definitely come first. Okay, um, I did get the Sebastian DLC. Um, got the uh, one with Corifinus. <laughs> Corifinus. Sebastian, stop this madness. The Chantry cannot condone revenge, Sebastian. It is my right, my duty, to show these assassins there is nowhere in the free marches to hide. This is murder. No. What happened to my family was murder. You tell him, Sebastian. You're absolutely right. Religious thinking has got this world backwards. Murder is getting away with murder. Rapist, child molesters getting away with it because we let them live and reward them with um, a duty-free existence with three hots and a cot while everyone else has to work for a living at the taxpayer's expense. At the at the expense of their victim taxpayers <laughs> to keep them alive. And killing a murderer is not murder. Killing a murderer is justice. Murderers killing innocent people is murder. All right? And if they're dead, they don't get to do that anymore. Hey, and the next guy who wants to murder might actually think twice about it. But hell, if I can, you know, go get a vacation where uh, I get to rest up all day and get three hots and a cot for free and don't even have to work or nothing, shit, might consider killing somebody. I, I think that's how uh, folks might think these days. Alright. Well, I'll leave it to Dragon Age to just hit the right nerve every once in a while. They'll just hit a nerve. <laughs> They will, they will poke at you and prod at you until they, they hit something. And, you know, you have to make a judgment call on something. You go, is this right or wrong? And it, <laughs> I know it's just a game, but a little uh, bring out the best or the worst in you <laughs> sometimes. That's awesome, man. That's, that's cool. That's cool. These may not be real-life situations, but they're real-life um, problems, real-life si real um, difficulties, real-life, you know, subjects that we're dealing with. I think that's uh, just just fantastic, man. All right, trying to remember all the uh, crates and barrels and things like that that I found in the past. Unless we're collecting a lot of potions, we need to go get rid of those. Playing on nightmare, um, just for money's sake, um, keep as few potions as possible. Sell them as you get them. And you'll you'll find more. The game's drop rate for potions is a lot higher when you don't have any. When you've got a bunch, you'll you'll almost never find one. And then when you find yourself actually needing one, you know, during a big fight or whatever, uh, you know, it won't be there. Yeah, it's a good idea. Um, believe it or not, it sounds backwards, but uh, honestly, um, keep, I keep either one or none, you know, potions in my inventory. 
essentially, you know, after leaving the merchant, I'll sell either all of them or maybe just keep one, okay? And then uh, the, the next few chests or enemies that I fight or whatever are almost all going to drop a potion of some sort. But if I have half a dozen or a dozen or more in my inventory, I'll, I'll hardly find them at all. Then get into a big fight, use them all anyway, and then um, get into another fight on the way back. <laughs> and, you know, I, I might catch some then, but bottom line is I could have just made money off those. So, uh, let's see, I don't know what the actual sell value on these things is, but it's something. Let's see, I've got five here. And I've got seven gold, six silver. So let's sell those five potions. Because I think I have some other miscellaneous junk, but it's not really worth anything. So it's worth, eh, they're worth four, four or five silver piece, probably depending on the merchant you go to. But uh, whatever. That's fine. By the end of the game, you know, you sell a couple hundred of, you know, each kind of potion. That's going to add up. That really is. And might actually help getting that one dream item. Now there is a, uh, there is a money glitch in this. It's almost identical to the one in Origins. Um, when we get to the Black Emporium, um, another DLC I did get, um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll cover it. It's not something I'm going to utilize in the game. I think um, the money limit in the game, which is it's it's you know it's not set in stone, but there's there's somewhat of a money cap. You know you're going to make so much. Now there's ways to maximize it. You can get like a rune of fortune really early in the game. Get one made as soon as soon as possible. Soon as as soon as you can find the ingredients for it, I think you gotta like make a trip to the coast, I think, and then come back and whatever. But you can get a rune of fortune in your gear um, through sandal as early as possible and start earning a certain percent. Um, depending on which piece of gear you put the rune of fortune in, depends on the return you get. But it'll be like an extra uh, certain percent amount of money you find. So instead of finding a gold, you'll find a gold and five silvers, or a gold and ten silvers, or something. You know. And so if you get runes of fortune stacked across a few of your party members in their armor when they have slots available, you can earn quite a bit extra money. Of course, now those slots are taken up with that, so if you want to actually use those slots for something else, that's kind of tedious. You may want some lightning resistance or spirit resistance when you know you're going to go into a, like a boss battle or something. And, uh, but it will uh, dramatically increase your, your gold drops over time. They will definitely pay themselves off, you know, runes of fortune. They're going to cost you something to make them, but they will, uh, they will make up for the cost uh, in short order. I'm not going that far with it, but um, like I say, my little thing is, is like I say, to sell the potions as I get them. After a while, I've got more gold than than I thought, you know, and I'll be like, wow, okay, that that does that does add up over time as long as you hit the merchant pretty often. What's up? Uh, anyway. Let's see, what other DLC did I get? Um, let's see, got Sebastian, got the one with Coryphonus, got uh, the, the uh, Mark of the Assassin, I think it's called, um, which I've never played before. Um, so that that's gonna be that's gonna be kind of blind. That'll be kind of cool. I don't know how much light it's gonna shed on. Uh, I'm assuming probably lean towards maybe something related to Leliana or something. Just guessing. I I Where they have no idea, but uh, we'll see. See when we get there. Griffius is the one that I'm obviously uh, really concerned about. Having played Inquisition now, I'm thinking going back with the eyes open a little more, a little more light shed on the situation, and uh, see if there aren't some uh, things that are, are, you know, have some relevance now. When you look at them, they actually make sense. Like, oh, wow, okay, I get it. Okay, so we've uh, we visited the merchants, at least in this area. Um, we've gotten the codex I could find, raided a few crates and barrels, and so on and so forth. So now we're here, and I make this kind of my last stop here in the keep, so we can get Aveline back in our party. Aveline, hello, Hawk. And that's it. What? Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. It feels like we just talked. I've been keeping an eye on you. Information is one of the few perks of this job. Watch out for Bartrand. He's a son of a bitch. Still having trouble? I thought you were past all that. Lately, I don't know. I've been pushed out to some dead patrols. Maybe I stepped on someone's toes. You can be... Forceful. My charm, right? I should be able to go where I'm needed. 
In fact, I might have a job for you. Let me know if you want to do a favor for Kirkwall. Otherwise, I'm here if you need me. Maker knows I could use more satisfying work. The blight is over. You could go back to Lothering. That wasn't home for me. It was just where the Horde pressed us. It wasn't the first village I saw fall. But you don't get used to people losing everything. It's not how I wanted to say goodbye. I'll say that. You can't go home again. That's supposed to be about maturity. It's not the same if you don't have the option. Seems like Kirkwall suits you. It has been a challenge. Lots of opportunity. If you're the type the locals want. Are you? If you argue enough, you kind of convince yourself. All right, Aveline. You have something worth doing? My patrols may be empty walks in the dark, but there's something big coming up, and I could use you. An ambush, probably for a caravan, although I can't find any shipments that match up. Doesn't matter, though. I women waiting for someone to rob. I'm putting a stop to it, my district or not. I'm no guard, Aveline. There's only so many of us. Temporary recruits are expected time to time, as long as they're competent. You still claim to be competent, right? Do you have a name or anything else to go on? Not important. If we show up and they attack, they're bad. Simple as that. I'll wager it's smugglers, though. Like I said, seems like an obvious trap for a caravan. You've been nosing around outside your commission. I have contacts. And they're complaining about a lack of meat. Thugs and such. Someone is hiring. And one or two were told to prepare for travelers. You want to be good at this job? You pay attention to what's missing and when people arrange escape routes. All right, Aveline. I'll play guard for you. I knew I could count on you. They're hidden up Sundermount, remote and rough, but we can make good time with a shortcut this side. And no, you can't run off and do it without me. I trust you, but I have to be there. You're acting on behalf of the guard. Right on, got her back. All right, so at least the, uh, the core squad here is together. Basic group. Of course, being true to uh, Dragon Age or just Bioware games in general, we'll be getting more followers. We all know that, but uh, for right now, it definitely gives us something to work with. Well, I hate to say it, um, Varric, Varric will um, obviously be useful early on, but there will be a point where having a two mage, um, one tank and one rogue, which is what I'm playing, system, um, will be essentially my ideal party. But it's nice to have Varric prepared for those situations where you have to bring him along. Anyway, all right, here's the Black Emporium. Absolutely love this place. To the black <laughs> right on, man. I am the great and magnificent Zemon, the Antiquarian. All right, what do we got here? Draste and nude repose. A symbol of purity with a lustful figure. Making people feel guilty for looking at it. <laughs> Essentially is the purpose it serves, I guess. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Please don't fondle on Draste. Alright, addictive pickled apples. Apparently the best thing anyone's ever put in their mouth. Alright. Well, sure, I like free. Actually, there may be an item or two in here that's worth using. No charge, you hear me? That's right, don't let the golem attack me. 
thinking I'm stealing something. A box of screaming. No idea. I don't know if any of these have any relevance to lore. Take a look at my character. I, I think I'm pretty happy. I don't know that I can improve my character's appearance. <laughs> cool, man. This, this is awesome. All right, let's see. Vessel of Tears. No idea. It's from Brother Jenna TV to Sister Patrine. Sister Patrine? I'm thinking Patrice. I don't know who Patrine is. Don't manhandle the urchin. <laughs> <laughs> He's not for sale. I totally forgot about Find that. That's one of my favorite lines. Don't manhandle the urchin. <laughs> Thanks up this stuff. This is just classic. Alright, so uh, he actually has some really cool stuff in here. If, if I recall, around in either Act 2, or Chapter 2, whatever you want to call it, or Act 3, he's got a really cool... Actually, this ring is nice right here. That's worth just running with. In fact, if I could afford it right now, I'd probably get it for that plus one XP gain. Through the course of a game, it'd probably wind up uh, resulting in a uh, an extra level, you know. After all said and done. Actually, I may still need a couple of these, but uh, I've got enough now for these guys and any, you know, the next member or two that I pick up. But I, I need everybody to respect. So what this will allow me to do is start completely from scratch. Uh, tactics, attribute points, skills, everything. It literally strips your character and puts everything back in the bank and lets you... Uh, draw from it for a, com a completely new rebuild, so. Alright, let's see. Um, first, uh, oh, I want to show you this. The, uh, the the money scheme, this is essentially how it goes. Put one item in your junk, okay? Here I have three, but that, I don't care about those two trash items, but that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm concerned with right there, right? Okay, so I sell that. Alright, go back. Alright, buy it back, okay, for the same price. Then go back to sell. Okay, go back to junk, and then hit sell all and sell item at almost the exact same time. And you'll notice, um, okay, that time it didn't work, but let's see. All right, so I buy it back, I'm at 57. If I sell it once, it should put me at 61. If I sell it twice, it should put me about 65. 66, okay, there you go. And you can, and then if I buy it back, it'll put me back at 61. Sell it again, it'll put me at 70. Okay, now this is a very cheap item, so... You know, obviously, it would take me forever to get any quantity of gold, but essentially work your way up to where you can buy an expensive item, then put that one item in your junk and keep double selling it, and you can get all the gold you need. I mean, you can get up into the thousands if you feel like it, and never worry about it again. But uh, it, that I, I can't see around that being an exploit. I mean, I don't know why it's in here also, because it's, 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 it's basically the identical um, infinite money glitch as um, from Origins. It's, it's a, you know, the, the merchants work a little different. You have to go to a separate menu for buy and sell. But other than that, it's, it's the same mechanic. But uh, anyway, so there it is. Just just in case anyone was interested. If you don't want to worry about gold in the game. But uh, it's too much like a, a cheat to me. So I'm not going to do it. I uh, thought I'd pass it along. All right, wow, the artist did a really good job here. <laughs> really did. Character's figure is actually nice. Okay, so we all drank a Maker's Sigh. And everybody's got all their points back. Now, with my character, um, unless I just absolutely have to, I'm not going to sink anything into anything but uh, a few dexterity and a whole crap ton of cunning. It's kind of the opposite of the Origins build, where I relied, I literally sank every point. 
um, that I could into dexterity. Well, this one, it's essentially uh, going all towards cunning, although I'm going to have some minimum requirements for gear. Um, for certain sets of armor, I think it's going to go up into... Uh, I think I'm going to have to get my dexterity up into the like, 30-something 30, 30 range, something like that. I don't know. It's cool to, you know, to keep it as low as necessary, and then if I find that I need it, um, then the next time I level up, you know, go ahead and throw a few points in there type of thing. Hopefully by that time I'll have all the gear that I'm going to be using set so that um, I'll know exactly how much, how many points I need for specifically gear-related stuff, and then everything else can get dumped into cunning because that's where literally all my damage comes from. And we'll start, we'll start putting up some pretty sexy numbers. All right, but here early on with few points, um, stealth is kind of a go-to, backstab is a go-to. Uh, speed is a sustained ability is go-to. It's uh, similar to momentum in Origins and works the same way. The faster you can attack, the more damage you do. It's really just that simple. Um, with uh, my mages, um, this is like the prime skill of theirs, Glypha Paralysis. That comes in handy in so many ways. And then heal is the obvious one. And Heroic Order, Aura is a buff for the entire party. And then Elemental Weapons is also a buff for the entire party. And the Mage is essentially there as a battery, okay? Um, now, Meryl is kind of an exception. Meryl is a little more tanky, and she's definitely a DPS Mage. She's um, she's an absolute beast when you set her upright. But um, as far as uh, Bethany and another Mage will be getting in the future, they're, uh, they're support. They're in there for heals and add buffs, and they add to the entire party strength as a whole. And they can do their share damage, you know few things, but make sure they have the mana pool to work with. And that's crucial here. Um, having a mana pool available, if you want them to do 20 different things, damn it, they better not have enough mana or stamina to do those 20 different things, or else those are wasted points, because if they can't pull them off, then they're just sitting there, okay? So they need to actually be able to perform them, so they need the energy to do so. So uh, any passives or whatever that lean towards uh, mana regen, things like that. I think rogues have things like extra mana or extra stamina return per attack or per critical that you hit, so you get their critical chance real high. You, can say, you know, things like that. Whatever. We'll, we'll we'll look into it later. But right now, we're still uh, just um, we're the hero down there at the riverbank stabbing mud crabs with sticks right now. I mean, we don't have a whole lot to work with. You know, just like any other RPG, when you're in your first few levels, you know, you're you're kind of limited what you have access to. But um, we'll start setting the foundation for our tank. Um, the ability to draw hate, okay, and then raise her defenses so that once she gets all the hate, she can keep it without dying instantly, okay, and then um, in any way to buff um, the party in her own little way with uh, maybe added defense, maybe some extra attack, maybe whatever she has to offer. But I don't really require Aveline to do a lot of um, offensive skills, like a lot of shield bashing, a lot of pummel strikes, a lot of this, a lot of that, and blah, blah, blah. Because it takes away from her doing the things that she has to do. She has to she has to have the stamina available to taunt and to keep her sustains active. All right? That's like key. That's first and foremost. In fact, that if that's all she did, we could get by. Okay? Now, if I am going to have her do anything, it's to buff the party here. And so Rally is a good one. It's relatively cheap. It's only 15 stamina. It's got a decent cooldown on, on it, so it shouldn't overlap too much with taunt. And she should be able to get enough stamina back. Whereas if I'm not asking her to do too much other stuff, she should be able to taunt and rally and essentially spam those. All right? It's when you start throwing in a whole bunch of extra abilities and say, I want her to do all this stuff. Well, shit. She's laying there in a, in a heaving, deep breathing heap on the ground, exhausted because she can't pull off any of those abilities because she doesn't have the stamina for it. So always keeping that in mind. There's got to be a, a synergy flowing with the party and... Uh, um, their talents, abilities, how they complement one another, the ability to pull those abilities off, right? And how they each support one another. And so you, know, you just kind of get everything kind of flowing together, and uh, it, it works really well. They gave us an extensive tactics menu. They added a, a few things so you can be more specific. You know, if, if this person specifically is doing this under this condition, then do that specifically at that time, you know, that type of thing. And so it's a little easier to micromanage their behaviors in tactics where you don't have to in the tactical menu. And that's why I say no pause gameplay. If you build the tactics right, this is essentially um, just another skill tree. The tactics, I mean, this is like a whole other build. Is You picture their behavior and you say, if this person does this, then I need them to do that. And then if that happens, I need them to do this. And you know, So you work out scenarios and you say, how can I direct this person to do this without me having to tell them to? You know, And uh, 
It's cool. I mean, it's it's fun. Like I say, it's almost like a build in and of itself. You have to uh, you have to you know make it to where it, it's it's manageable. But um, you know, I don't even have any health potions, so I can't assign any health potions to that slot right there. I have to wait till I pick one up because I sold them all off. But that's fine. All right, self health below twenty five percent. Drink a potion. The, but I assign my mage to heal an ally if they're below 50%. So essentially, if you get to 25%, it means that heal isn't on cooldown. You need to drink a potion. Hopefully by the time you get down to 50% again or less, my mage will be able to heal you that time around. Or your potions will be on cooldown again. All right. So the idea is to not have the potion drinking and the healing overlapping. All right. Let the healing come first, and then when the mage isn't able to heal again because the spell's on cooldown, they don't have the mana, whatever then you'll have a potion as kind of a backup, all right? That's how I figure that. Glyph of Paralysis for any target between short and medium range, period, okay? And that's essentially anybody who might be attacking her, anybody who's in the middle of the battlefield during a big mob battle while everybody's running around like ants with their heads cut off, you know, whatever. Um, constantly buff the party with heroic aura. Constantly buff the party with elemental weapons, which gives you the element type of the staff that she has equipped. So if you want to change the element type, change your staff. If you want fire weapons, give her a fire staff. Just that simple. Okay, now, this may seem crazy at first. Um, I'm going to assign Varric with this really cool skill. Um, it's called back-to-back. -back. And what that allows him to do is pick a, um ally, a certain kind of ally. You can have him, You can assign him to do back-to-back -back with the nearest visible mage, you know, or something. Or have him go back-to-back -back with um, Bethany if she's getting attacked, period. Right? Um, or whatever. Or you can... Um, Essentially, I, I think really the best way I found to work it is just have him do back-to-back -back, um, with the nearest uh, visible mage. And what this does, this has synergy with another skill. There's another skill which which gives him like a peaceful aura type of thing. All right, and that anyone within like 10 meters of him, um, what he does is he, he, he literally removes all the hate um, from uh, anyone within a certain range of himself, right? Okay, so check this out. Okay, let me find it. Okay, hold on a second. I need, I need to look. I need to remember exactly how this works. I'm a little rusty here. That's all right. Here it is. All right, Armistice. The rogue um, distracts enemies surrounding a single, a single party member. Okay? So you can assign him to a particular mage. You can assign him to the nearest visible mage, which means the one's closest to him. All right? And if, he's, if you have him assigned to go back-to-back -back with the nearest visible mage... Um, or, or any mage under any condition, have him go back to back. That means he's always going to be near your mages, all right? And then if he feels any kind of threat, all right, then have him um, do that armistice thing, and he lets off an aura of peace, which um, sheds some of the hate, not only on himself, but on any any uh, party member that's near him, okay? And if if your mages and Varric are staying at range, then essentially it draws the heat away from them and hopefully back to Aveline where it belongs, now we can we can further enhance this. This has good synergy with another ability called Goad, where he can essentially sick a certain enemy on Aveline specifically. So if like say there's an enemy attacking Anders, he can goad that enemy to go attack Aveline instead. And it's gonna take that enemy a second to turn his attention away from Anders or away from Bethany or away from whoever and go actually find Aveline. You know, that's kind of the idea. But anyway, so so back to back and armistice is what we'll have set up for him. Right now it's just Bethany, but you can uh, you can have um, nearest visible mage period, right? And just back to back, period, all right. And so uh, he should essentially be near your mages all the time. And then if say in this case Bethany, you could even have it to where if he himself is being attacked by a say a melee or a ranged attack. He could pull off Armistice, and as long as he's near a mage, it's going to affect them too anyway, right? So either way, but as long as those have synergy together, as long as he's near the mages and he's shedding the hate, the hate should go back to Aveline, where it belongs, all right? That's that's the idea, and you can start fine-tuning that as you add skills. But essentially, you've assigned Varric a job, all right? And he needs to perform that job to the best of his ability, so start kind of steering his skills and, you know, you look around through the different skill trees and see if there's different skills which complement that one particular job that you've got him doing. 
If he can, you know, pull the hate away from the squishy targets and put them back on the hard targets like Abilene, then any skill, regardless of which tree it's in, that applies to that, you might start picking those. And they'll all start to flow together. And next thing you know, the enemy's going where you want them to go rather than just running around hacking away your whole team. Right? Once again, party synergy. Okay? And uh, like I say, you know, it's, 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 it's just basic principles and then configure. This isn't the only way to set up Varric. This is just a way that I found that worked. I thought it was pretty cool. And it, it means I don't have to think about it. I don't have to go in and micromanage every shot that he takes, everywhere that he moves, move over here, move away from there, heal now, shoot this now, do this here. Screw that. I don't even want to go in the tactical menu. I want to kick ass. Fast, brutal, efficient, get in there and wipe, wipe the floor with the enemy and not have to pause and look like a real badass when I'm done and stuff. That's that's fun to me. You know, that's cool. And uh, like I say, designing tactics that work is, in a sense, you know, it's it's an art in and of, in and of itself, you know. So, I, I, you know, anyway, like I said, you can come up with different variations and stuff like that. You may have Varric do something completely different. But whatever you do, focus on that. And rather than, than ask him to do a million things, have him do that job and do it really, really well. And he will fit in in his part of your party. And then if, if the other members of your party are all doing their job really, really well also, then the whole, then the whole party works as a whole. And you work, you know, in, in unity and there's a lot of synergy and stuff. And then you become really, really effective. You become twice as effective as you would with, instead of everybody trying to do everything all on their own, right? Let each person do their assigned task and do it, do it excellently. Anyway, that's, that's my best advice for, for building the party and keeping those things in mind with the tactics. But I will include my leveling and my tactics as, we've, as we go along. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, I'm just assigning a few points in here. I'm going to leave it out. I'm actually going to include these. So anyone who wants to keep track. and if, In other words, if, if you see it successful and you say, well, wow, how's this party working like that? You know, if it's working, then um, give you something to fall back on. And you can look and see exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And at least see the logic that I'm applying to it, if nothing else. Even if you don't want to do that specifically, you can at least maybe get some ideas or something. That's the idea. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you want to subscribe, click that button up top. And if you want to catch more videos, click that uh, little image right there in the middle. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.